Deneb's scream of terror pierced the air as the Terran insurgent's rocket slammed into his armored hovercar, the explosions and gunfire outside nearly drowning out the galactic consul's panicked shrieks. Flames licked at Deneb's robes as thick black smoke poured into the ruined vehicle. Alan Young, the human diplomat tasked with escorting the consul on his disastrous visit to Earth, knew that if he didn't act fast, the most powerful Vidian in the galaxy would be dead in seconds. Just hours ago, Alan had stood in Deneb's opulent office on the Vidian homeworld, stunned by the consul's sudden announcement that he would be touring Earth, the most rebellious planet in the Empire. For years, the consul had dealt with an endless stream of complaints, protests, and petitions from the humans, who chafed under the yoke of Vidian rule. Now, Deneb intended to see the situation on Earth firsthand, to determine if completely blockading and isolating the troublesome world was necessary. Allen had vehemently objected to the proposed crackdown, warning it would inflame the already seething resentment on Earth and other restive slave worlds like Kepler 438b and Trappist 1e. Revolt, terrorism, and outright war could follow. But the consul dismissed Allen's concerns, insisting the visit proceed. During the tense journey to Earth aboard Deneb's cruiser, Allen continued desperately arguing Earth's case, but to no avail. As they approached the human homeworld, the planet's orbital defense platforms had even locked weapons on the consul's ship, only barely standing down when they recognized his transponder codes. Upon landing in Geneva, the grim-faced Earth Defense Force soldiers greeting the consul's party made their hostility plain, jostling Deneb several times as they escorted him to the waiting hovercar. And now, ambushed by insurgents firing armor-piercing rounds and rockets, the consul's Earth visit had become a bloody nightmare. As Alan dragged the badly wounded Deneb from the burning vehicle, he knew that if he didn't get the consul to safety, the Vidians would unleash genocidal vengeance on Earth for this attack. Taking cover behind the hovercar's shattered hull, Alan grimly raised a fallen guard's pistol and prepared to sell his life dearly to protect Deneb against the rebels until reinforcements arrived. The fate of Earth itself hung in the balance. The hovercar's screeching halt jolted Allen as EDF soldiers swarmed the landing pad, their plasma rifles spitting blue bolts that ripped through the remaining Vidian guards. Deneb slumped in his seat, blood soaking his torn robes. Allen dragged the console out of the vehicle, shouting for a medic. Two EDF troopers rushed over with a grav stretcher, roughly dumping Deneb onto it before sprinting towards a waiting VTOL transport. As the ramp slammed shut and the engines roared to life, Alan collapsed into a jump seat, the adrenaline draining from his body. Aurelius wants to see you, now! The co-pilot jerked his thumb towards the cockpit. Alan staggered into the cramped compartment. General Marcus Aurelius stood hunched over a holographic command console, his battered combat armor splattered with blood and soot. He glanced up, his eyes hard. Damn shame the consul survived. Would have been better for everyone if he'd died in the attack. Sir? Alan stared at him in disbelief. His death would have been the spark to ignite a revolution across the whole damn Vidian Empire. But you just had to play hero, eh, young? Aurelius growled. The transport touched down at a heavily guarded military compound. Alan watched a medical team rush Deneb into surgery then numbly followed Aurelius to a briefing room. On the wall screens, Earth's puppet governor Silas Quisling was delivering an address, his pasty face glistening with sweat under the harsh lights. Famis condemn this vicious attack on our esteemed galactic consul in the strongest possible terms. I pledge to work hand-in-hand -hand with Vidian authorities to bring the perpetrators to justice. Aurelius flicked off the screens with a disgusted snort. The door hissed open, and Quisling slunk into the room, dabbing his forehead with a silk handkerchief. Gentlemen, he said smoothly, I trust we're secure here? Aurelius nodded curtly. Alan glared at Quisling, his hands balling into fists. You, you were behind this, he snarled. Quisling smiled thinly. Come now, Mr. Young. You of all people should understand what an opportunity we had. Killing Deneb, blaming it on the resistance, we could have openly rebelled found allies among the other slave worlds. 
but you let sentiment cloud your judgment. Alan lunged at Quisling, only to be jerked back by Aurelius. You cold-blooded son of a bitch! I did what had to be done for Earth, Quisling snapped. The Vidians must be destroyed. Their foul empire brought crashing down around them. No matter the consequences. As Quisling stormed out, Aurelius fixed Alan with a piercing stare. The governor's methods are distasteful, but he may be right. Think on that. Over the coming weeks, a recovering Deneb toured Earth, with Alan acting as his aide and bodyguard. Despite careful stage management by their Vidian handlers, the grim realities of the occupation were impossible to ignore. In the gutted ruins of once great cities, ragged bands of workers marched with placards denouncing Vidian tyranny. Parasites out, they chanted. Give us back our freedom. Vidian security forces waded in with stun batons and nerve gas, beating the protesters into submission. Deneb said little, but Alan saw the consul's eyes widen in shock at the sight of malnourished children huddling in bombed-out tenements, of haggard workers slaving in factories to churn out weapons for the Vidian war machine. One night, under a sky flickering with the harsh blue glare of orbital defense lasers, Alan slipped Deneb out of their quarters. Skimming low over the Earth's scarred surface in a flyer, they passed knots of hollow-cheeked humans shuffling towards mining camps ringed with razor wire and guard towers. In hastily built barracks reeking of sweat and despair, Alan showed Deneb men and women toiling to extract vital ores for export to Vidian factory worlds. Many collapsed at their work, only to be kicked and beaten until they crawled back to the mine face. My God, Deneb whispered, I never knew. I swear I never knew it was this bad. Alan said nothing. He had made his own devil's bargain, collaborating to keep some semblance of peace. But to see his homeworld bled white to prop up the Vidian Empire, doubt gnawed at him, kept him awake long into the night. As their tour drew to a close, Deneb summoned Alan for a private talk. The consul looked haggard, his eyes haunted. Everything I believed, it was a lie, Deneb said hoarsely. We're not bringing order and civilization to the galaxy. We're a plague, a monstrous evil that must be stopped. He gripped Alan's arm. I'm going to resign as Galactic Consul, work from within to undermine the Empire, weaken it for the death blow. Alan nodded slowly. And Earth? My people? Deneb hesitated. I'll do what I can. Push for reforms, a lightening of the occupation. But it will take time. Alarms blared, cutting him off. Alan's comlink crackled to life. We're under attack, a panicked voice shouted. EDF troops are storming the compound. They're trying to... A burst of plasma fire, then silence. Alan and Deneb sprinted for the landing field. All around them, Vidian guards and EDF soldiers fought viciously among the grounded shuttles and transports. General Aurelius strode across the tarmac, his men fanning out behind him. He raised a megaphone to his lips. Vidian forces are ordered to stand down immediately, he bellowed. Galactic Consul Deneb will surrender himself to EDF custody to stand trial for crimes against humanity. He fixed Alan with a triumphant glare. Earth declares its independence effective immediately. The Terran Republic is born this day. Deneb and Alan exchanged a horrified look as they crouched behind a burned-out personnel carrier. The whole spaceport had become a withering kill zone of plasma bolts and rockets. Escape seemed impossible. Alan's heart pounded as he and Deneb crouched behind a stack of cargo crates, plasma bolts sizzling overhead. The spaceport had turned into a war zone, EDF troops and Vidian guards locked in vicious combat. We need to get to my shuttle, Deneb whispered, his eyes wide with fear. Alan nodded, scanning the chaotic battlefield. Follow me. Stay low. They crawled through debris and wreckage, skirting firefights and dodging stray shots. After what felt like hours, they reached the small hangar housing Deneb's personal craft. Thank the stars, Deneb breathed as they slipped inside. But his relief was short-lived. Alan cursed as he examined the shuttle's engines. Sabotaged. EDF work. We're trapped, Deneb moaned. Alan's mind raced. Not yet. I have an idea. 
They sprinted to a nearby maintenance shed, Alan praying his hunch was right. Inside, he found what he sought, two EVA suits. Put this on, he ordered Deneb, tossing him a suit. We're going for a walk. Suited up, they crept onto the darkened landing field. Alan's bolt cutters made short work of a perimeter fence. Beyond lay their target, a grounded Vidian troop transport. That's our ticket out, Alan said. They clambered aboard the ship, its hull pockmarked with artillery damage. In the cockpit, Alan's stomach lurched at the sight of the dead crew. Can you fly this? Deneb asked. Alan's hands flew over the controls, about to find out. The engines roared to life. Alan yanked back on the yoke, narrowly avoiding a barrage of anti-aircraft fire as they rocketed skyward. As they broke orbit, the comms crackled with panicked Vidian transmissions. Human slaves in open revolt. Lost control of orbital platforms. Earth Defense Force overrunning. Alan and Deneb exchanged stunned looks. Then a new threat appeared. From behind Earth's moon, a ragtag fleet emerged. Vidian warships, converted freighters, even passenger liners overflowing with makeshift weapons. It's the Rebellion, Alan breathed. The Rebel Armada opened fire, tearing into the Vidian ships. At their head, a former luxury liner now christened New Hope led the charge. Alan made a split-second decision. He steered towards the Rebel formation, broadcasting on all frequencies. This is Alan Young, Earth diplomat. I have Galactic Consul Deneb aboard. We request asylum. Tense minutes passed. Then a woman's voice. This is Captain Amelia Dubois of the New Hope. Approach and prepare to be boarded. Soon they stood on the New Hope's bridge. Captain Dubois, a hard-eyed woman in a patchwork uniform, eyed them warily. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. You've stumbled into a revolution. She explained the scope of the uprising. Coordinated revolts across the Empire, hijacked ships converging to form a makeshift navy. Deneb listened in awe. You've done it, he said. You've sparked a galactic revolution. Kepler 438B, Trappist 1E, they're all rising up. He turned to Dubois. I want to help. My knowledge of Vidian tactics, technology, it's yours. The bridge crew cheered. Dubois nodded, then turned to Alan. We're bound for our base on Titan. I want you as liaison between us and Deneb. Your experience with both sides will be invaluable. Alan gazed out the observation deck as the battered rebel fleet set course for the outer system. Earth receded behind them, but a new future beckoned ahead. The age of Vidian Dominion was ending. Humanity's fight for freedom had only just begun. The New Hope's engines roared as Alan Young guided the ship towards Earth leading the Vanguard Strike Force. Sweat beaded on his forehead as he studied the tactical display, a sea of red dots representing the Vidian blockade. Vanguard Fleet, this is Young. Prepare for maximum warp on my mark. Alan barked into the comm. The instant they dropped out of warp, chaos erupted. Vidian antimatter weapons tore through the rebel ships, vaporizing entire cruisers in blinding flashes. Evasive Pattern Delta! Alan shouted, yanking the controls. The New Hope lurched, narrowly avoiding a direct hit. Alarms blared as systems failed across the ship. A nearby frigate exploded, showering the viewscreen with debris. We can't take much more of this, Deneb yelled over the din. Alan tightened fists. All ships, full speed ahead. Punch through their line. The New Hope shuddered as it accelerated to maximum warp, plowing through the Vidian formation. Alan fought to keep the ship stable as they entered Earth's atmosphere, hull plating glowing red-hot from the friction. Brace for impact! The ship slammed into the ground, skidding through the ruins of old New York. As the dust settled, Alan pulled himself from the wreckage. Deneb stumbled out behind him, coughing. Status report, Alan croaked. A handful of battered crew members gathered around them. Before anyone could speak, plasma bolts sizzled overhead. Vidian shock troops, Deneb shouted. Alan grabbed a fallen rifle. Take cover. They scrambled behind chunks of debris as waves of Vidian soldiers advanced. Alan fired burst after burst, downing alien troops, but more kept coming. 
Just as their position was about to be overrun, the sky lit up with explosions. The main rebel fleet had arrived, bombarding Vidian positions from orbit. Now's our chance, Alan yelled. Push forward! They fought street by street through the ruins, linking up with human resistance fighters along the way. Days blurred together as they battled across the northeastern United States. Finally, they reached the outskirts of Boston. General Aurelius's gruff voice crackled over the comm. Young, glad you made it. We're hitting the Vidian Command Center. Could use your help. Allen surveyed his ragtag force. We're on our way. They converged on the United Nations Plaza, now a fortress overflowing with Vidian defenses. Wave after wave of rebels fell to withering plasma artillery fire. Allen ducked behind a shattered wall, mind racing. His eyes fell on a half-buried access hatch. Deneb, he shouted. Take a squad through that service tunnel. I'll draw their fire. As Deneb's team vanished underground, Allen manned the anti-aircraft guns, coordinating with the rebel fleet to suppress Vidian air support. Minutes stretched into hours as the battle raged. Suddenly, the Vidian defenses went silent. Allen's calm crackled to life. This is Deneb. We've secured the command center, but... His voice trailed off. But what? Alan demanded. The Vidians are about to activate planet killer weapons. If we don't stop them, Earth is doomed. Alan's blood ran cold. He sprinted for the UN building, praying they weren't too late to save their home. Uh. Alan Young stepped onto the gleaming surface of Kepler 22B, the sprawling cityscape of the Alliance capital stretching out before him. The air tasted different here. Crisp with a hint of alien vegetation. Deneb stood beside him, his hybrid features drawing curious stares from passing diplomats. Ready for this? Alan asked, adjusting his formal attire. Deneb nodded, his eyes scanning the crowd. As I'll ever be. They made their way through bustling corridors to the Grand Assembly Chamber. Alien races from across the galaxy packed the tiered seating, some humanoid, others utterly bizarre. The cacophony of languages filled the air, translators working overtime. As they took their seats, a hush fell over the crowd. General Zoran of Kepler-16b strode to the central podium, his face twisted in a snarl. Fellow Alliance members, he boomed. While we debate, Vidian warlords ravage our outer colonies. The time for talk is over. We must strike now, before... A commotion erupted from the back of the chamber. Security forces wrestled with a group of protesters who had broken through the perimeter. Death to the hybrid! One of them screamed, hurling a projectile at Deneb. Alan leapt in front of his friend, the object shattering against his chest. As guards dragged the assailants away, he helped Deneb to his feet. You all right? Alan asked. Deneb nodded, his face pale. I'm fine, but this, this is what we're up against. The assembly devolved into chaos, accusations flying between factions. Alan watched in dismay as years of hard-won unity threatened to unravel. Finally, Deneb stood. The chamber fell silent as he approached the podium, his unique physiology on full display. I understand your fear, he began, his voice steady. I was once your enemy, but now I stand before you as living proof that change is possible. He closed his eyes, concentrating. Even now, I can sense the Vidian group mind. It's fracturing, dying. Their empire crumbles as we speak. Murmurs rippled through the crowd. Deneb continued, We don't need to launch a costly assault. Time and isolation will finish what Earth's rebellion started. General Zoran leapt to his feet. Lies! he roared. This abomination would have a show mercy to butchers and slavers. The chamber erupted once more. Alan watched as allegiances shifted, alliances formed and shattered. Hours of heated debate followed. In the end, by the narrowest of margins, the alliance voted to adopt Deneb's strategy of economic isolation. Alan let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. As the session adjourned, General Zoran cornered them in a secluded hallway, his eyes blazed with barely contained fury. You've doomed us all, he hissed. 
Mark my words, more this weakness will be our undoing. Alan stepped forward, meeting the general's glare. We chose peace, general. That's not weakness. Zorin sneered. We'll see about that. He stormed off, leaving Alan and Deneb alone in the corridor. What now? Deneb asked quietly. Alan squared his shoulders. Now we get to work. We've got a galaxy to rebuild. Alan Young stared out the viewport of the Alliance flagship, his eyes fixed on the swirling gases of the Rana Cluster. The bridge bustled with activity, but he barely registered the chatter of officers and the beeping of consoles. Sir, incoming transmission from Demeter, a young ensign called out. Alan snapped back to attention. On screen! The holographic display flickered to life, revealing a haggard-looking colonial official. Ambassador Young, it's... It's gone. The whole southern continent. What happened? Alan asked, his stomach nodding. Admiral Malra's fleet. They came out of nowhere. Orbital bombardment, then ground troops. The body count. The official's voice cracked. Alan clenched his fists. We're dispatching aid immediately. Hold on. As the transmission cut out, Alan turned to his second in command. Get me General Zoran. Now. Moments later, Zoran's scowling face filled the screen. What is it, young? I'm busy. Stand down your fleet, General. That's an order from the Alliance Council. Zoran laughed harshly. Orders? While you politicians dither, the Vidians slaughter our people. No more. We end this today. The screen went dark. Alan slammed his palm on the console. Damn it! He strode across the bridge to where Deneb sat eyes closed in concentration. Any luck? Deneb's eyes fluttered open. The Vidian group mind, it's chaos, fear, anger, confusion. I can't control it. Alan placed a hand on his friend's shoulder. We need to stop Zoran before... Sir, an officer interrupted. Zoran's fleet has engaged Vidian forces at Anot. The main view screen lit up with tactical data. Red icons swarmed across the display as Zoran's armada tore through the Vidian defenses. He's already taken Freehill, Deneb said quietly. I can feel the death toll rising. Alan's mind raced. Plot an intercept course to Rana, maximum warp, and get me a secure channel to the Vidian leadership. As the ship lurched into warp, Alan addressed the Vidian High Command, their tentacled faces twisted with a mix of fear and defiance. Your empire is finished, Alan said bluntly, but there's still a chance to save your people. Stand down your forces. Surrender to the Alliance, not to Zoran. The Vidians chittered amongst themselves before one spoke. And why should we trust you, human? Because the alternative is extinction. Alan nodded to Deneb. Show them. Deneb closed his eyes, reaching out with his mind. The Vidian leaders gasped, their eye stalks writhing as Deneb's memories flooded their consciousness. When it was over, the lead Vidian spoke again, his voice subdued. We... we had no idea. The things we've done... It's not too late, Alan urged. Order your fleets to power down. We'll protect you from Zoran. The Vidians nodded solemnly. It will be done. As they dropped out of warp at Rana... Alan saw Zoran's massive fleet arrayed before them. Beyond lay the Vidian core worlds, their orbital defenses already crumbling. Sir, the Vidian ships, they're shutting down, an officer reported incredulously. Alan allowed himself a small smile. Hail General Zoran. Zoran's face appeared, contorted with rage. What have you done, young? It's over, General. The Vidians have surrendered to the Alliance. Stand down your forces. Never, Zoran spat. I'll finish this myself if I have to. Alan watched in horror as Zoran's flagship powered up its main gun, targeting the nearest Vidian world. Deneb now, Alan shouted. Deneb's face contorted with effort as he reached out to Zoran's mind. The general's eyes went wide, his hand frozen above the fire control. For a moment, everything was still. Then Zoran's ship erupted in a storm of weapons fire aimed directly at Deneb's vessel. No, Alan cried as Deneb's ship vanished in a blinding flash. In that instant, Alan felt a presence brush against his mind. 
Deneb's final gift, a psychic surge that washed over Zoran's fleet. On the console, Alan watched as ship after ship went dark, their crews slumping at their stations. As Alliance reinforcements warped in, Alan stood alone on the bridge, staring at the blank space where his friend had been. Alan stood motionless, his eyes fixed on the empty space where Deneb's ship had been. The bridge of the Alliance flagship fell silent, the gravity of what had just transpired hanging heavy in the air. A junior officer's voice broke the stillness. Sir, incoming transmission from Alliance Command. Alan nodded, his throat tight. The holographic display flickered to life, revealing the weathered face of Admiral Thorne. Young, we've received word of what happened. The Alliance Council is convening an emergency session. Your presence is required on Meridian immediately. The journey to the new Alliance capital was a blur. Alan spent the hours in his quarters, replaying the final moments of the battle in his mind. He couldn't shake the feeling of Deneb's presence brushing against his thoughts one last time. As the ship touched down on Meridian's pristine landing pad, Alan was struck by the stark contrast between the gleaming spires of the capital and the devastation he'd just witnessed. A somber procession of dignitaries led him to the Grand Council Chamber. The circular room buzzed with tension as representatives from dozens of worlds debated the aftermath of Zoran's actions. Alan took his seat, acutely aware of the eyes upon him. High Counselor Zara, her crystalline form shimmering in the chamber's light, called for order. Ambassador Young, please step forward and recount the events at Rana. Alan stood, his voice steady as he detailed the final confrontation with Zoran and the Vidian's surrender. A hush fell over the chamber as he described Deneb's sacrifice. And so, Alan concluded, we stand at a crossroads. The Vidian threat is neutralized, but at a terrible cost. The question before us now is, what kind of galaxy will we build from here? Murmurs rippled through the assembly. Counselor Ketra, his eight eyes blinking rapidly, spoke up. The Vidians have committed unspeakable atrocities. Many would say they deserve extinction. Alan met the counselor's gaze. And yet, it was mercy that brought us victory. Deneb showed us a better way, a path beyond endless cycles of vengeance. The debate raged for hours. Alan found himself at the center, arguing passionately for a new approach. As the session drew to a close, High Counselor Zara stood. Ambassador Young, your actions have averted a catastrophe and opened a door to lasting peace. The Council hereby bestows upon you our highest civilian honor, the Star of Unity. Alan bowed his head as the gleaming medallion was placed around his neck. Zara continued. Furthermore, we appoint you as the first official human ambassador to the Vidian civilization. Your mission is to oversee their transition to a peaceful member of our galactic community. The weight of the responsibility settled on Alan's shoulders. He thought of Deneb, of the countless lives lost in this long conflict. I accept, he said, his voice firm, for the future of all our peoples. Days later, Alan stood on the bridge of a diplomatic vessel, watching as the scarred worlds of the Vidian core systems came into view. The ship's sensors painted a grim picture, vast swathes of devastation, millions displaced, entire ecosystems on the brink of collapse. As they entered orbit around the first world, Alan steeled himself for the challenges ahead. He touched the Star of Unity at his throat, a reminder of the faith placed in him and of the friend whose sacrifice had made this moment possible. Ambassador, the ship's captain said, we're receiving a transmission from the surface. It's a group of Vidian faction leaders requesting to speak with you. Alan nodded, squaring his shoulders. Put them through. It's time to begin. The holographic display flickered to life, revealing a group of haggard Vidian faces. Their eyes, once filled with conquest and hatred, now held uncertainty and fear. Alan took a deep breath, ready to take the first step on the long road to peace. The Grand Chamber of the former Vidian Imperial Palace fell silent as Alan Young drew his final breaths. The ornate vaulted ceiling loomed above, its intricate murals depicting the long history of conflict and eventual reconciliation between humanity and the Vidians. 
Alan's withered hand clutched a small data crystal, its surface etched with alien script. His eyes, though clouded with age, still held the sharp intelligence that had guided galaxies. I've carried this burden for so long, he whispered, his voice barely audible. The assembled dignitaries leaned in, straining to catch his words. It's time you knew the truth. With trembling fingers, he inserted the crystal into a nearby console. The holographic display flickered to life, revealing a maze of encrypted data. Alan's hands danced across the controls, muscle memory overriding the frailty of his aging body. These are Deneb's final records, he explained, his voice growing stronger as he spoke. What he discovered in the Vidian group mine during that last battle at Rana. The assembled crowd watched in rapt attention as Alan decrypted file after file. Fragments of alien code, psionic wavelength patterns, and genetic sequences flashed across the screen. The Omega Protocol, Alan said, his voice heavy with the weight of decades of secrecy. A failsafe buried deep within Vidian DNA. A last resort should their race face extinction. A Vidian scholar, his tentacles twitching nervously, spoke up. What are you saying, Ambassador Young? Alan's gaze swept the room, taking in the faces of those he'd worked alongside for so many years. If the Vidians had been wiped out, it would have triggered a transformation. Their entire species would have become a non-corporeal psionic entity, spreading across the galaxy like a plague. Gasps and murmurs rippled through the chamber. A human advisor stepped forward, her face pale. But that's impossible. The science doesn't... The science is beyond our comprehension, Alan interrupted. Deneb saw it, felt it in the group mind. If Zoran had succeeded, he would have doomed us all. The holographic display shifted, showing the aftermath of devastated worlds. Alan's voice grew hoarse as he recounted the horrors Deneb had glimpsed. Entire civilizations reduced to ash. Life itself extinguished as the psionic wave swept outward. This is why we pushed so hard for reconciliation, Alan explained. Not just for peace, but for survival. By integrating the Vidians into our society, we've kept that dark potential at bay. The room erupted in a cacophony of voices. Questions, accusations, and fearful speculation filled the air. Alan slumped back in his bed, his strength fading. A Vidian ambassador approached, his compound eyes reflecting a mix of horror and gratitude. You saved us from ourselves, he said softly. Alan nodded weakly. But at what cost, he whispered. The lies, the secrets. I fear what might happen if this truth gets out. His eyes began to close, consciousness slipping away. I'm sorry, he murmured. I should have told you sooner. Forgive me. With a final, shuddering breath, Alan Young, the voice of the people, the architect of galactic peace, fell silent. The assembled dignitaries stood in stunned silence, the weight of his revelation hanging heavy in the air. As the news of Alan's passing spread through the palace, the gathered ambassadors and scholars filed out of the chamber. Their faces were grim, their minds reeling from the knowledge that the peace they'd worked so hard to build might be founded on a terrible secret. In the empty chamber, the holographic display continued to flicker, its eerie light casting shadows across Alan's still form. The data crystal pulsed softly, a silent testament to the sacrifices made and the dangers that might still lie ahead. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.